Hello everyone and welcome to the fourth challenge of Damn Vulnerable DeFi. Today we'll be taking on the side entrance challenge. So let's go ahead and get into it. So let's read the description. A surprisingly simple lending pool allows anyone to deposit ETH and withdraw it at any time. This is a very simple lending pool and has a thousand ETH in balance already and is offering free flash loans using the deposited ETH to promote their system. You must take all ETH from the lending pool. So, uh, interesting. Let's go have a look and see what we can do here. So we have a look at the lending pool here and we have the side entrance lender pool. So there's three functions here. The first one, uh, the first state variable that they have is the balances. So this is gonna keep track of how much each individual address has deposited into this lending pool um, such that they can withdraw that amount once they've deposited. So let's have a look at the deposit function. So I'm gonna pay some ETH into this lending pool because this is a payable function. And then the balances of me who just sent that uh, deposit will increase by the amount that I deposited. Pretty straightforward. Uh, the withdraw function, very, very similar. So it just gets the amount to withdraw, which is the total balance that we have deposited. Um, it then sets that balance to zero and then sends the value back to us. Now, uh, just quickly as a side note, um, if you know about re-entrancy uh, exploits, this could have been a re-entrancy exploit if this was down here. So you could call uh, amount to withdraw is this amount, it then sends the value to us, and then we catch that and then send it back in, as in we kind of use a callback function to then uh, call this again and it sends us that value. We keep doing that until it's um, zero and then uh, and then we've drained the ETH. However, it is not in this case. So um, there's another exploit here. Let's have a look at the flash loan. So we request a flash loan by just requesting how much uh, we want. It does the classic checks what the balance is today. Uh, I don't know what I just did. And then um, it's... Uh, requires that the balance of the smart contract to be greater than what we are wanting to borrow. So then once it does that, it then asks a iFlash loan ether receiver for the message.sender. So this is an interface that we will then now need to implement. Um, and it executes the, uh, it calls the function execute with the value uh, that we have requested. So it transfers it to us and it uh, executes the execute function. Then afterwards, it just requires that the balance has been paid back. So how do we exploit this? Where's the exploit here? So um, the main thing here of what's exploitable is that uh, once it comes back to us, it checks that the address, the balance of this address is greater than uh, or equal to what, what it was initially. However, we can do something a little bit tricky here. Once we get the flash loan amount and we can control it, we can then straight away deposit it into this contract. So when we deposit it in, the value of the contract will remain uh, the same because we get the money from the contract and then loop it directly back in now. However, we have now updated the balances state variable such that we are entitled to the entire uh, uh, borrow amount that we have given. So when we deposit back in, the balance of message.sender is now the balance of how much we borrowed. And so what we can then do after that is complete is just hit the withdraw function, which is gonna withdraw externally from the flash loan function because it has already done the check and verified that we've paid it back. But it's gonna withdraw all that cash or all that ETH that we are entitled to because we deposited it in, sends it to us and we win. So. Let's go ahead and see how we would do that. So the main thing here is a little bit different is that we're gonna need to implement this interfa interface of iFlashLoan Ether Receiver. Um, and this is defined up here, which is just basically one function uh, that is called execute that's externally payable. So to do this, let's go ahead and create a new file and it's gonna be called attack side entrance. Dot sol, my bad. And let's take a look at our contract. So this is the attack contract that we're going to use. So we're going to import the side entrance lender pool. So this is just this contract here. And we're going to store the pool in a variable. And we're also going to create an owner variable. We could use the ownable um, 
library from Open Zeppelin, but we don't really need that right now. So in the constructor, we uh, ensure that the address uh, of the pool is we pass that in. So we know what the pool address is. And then we also set the owner to ever deploy the contract. Um, and then we have three functions here. Uh, firstly called attack, execute, and receive. So receive here is the fallback function. So when a funds are called or you know funds are sent into this contract, and there hasn't been any, you know, there's no matching function, it's gonna just call this one. So this is kind of like your default function that's called. Um, so we have attack here. Let's have a look at what attack does. Um, attack will take in an amount, which is how much we want to borrow, and then it will call the pool flash loan. So the flash loan will kind of follow the logic here, right? So the flash loan in the side pool will then be called here with the amount that we want to require. So then it calls back to the execute with the amount that we requested. So we come back to our contract and we have this execute function, which is implemented from the uh, interface, which I realize I don't actually have here, but it's fine, it still works. So we have this execute function now and within the execute function, so we now have the funds in this contract, we then wanna deposit the funds back in. So in this function, we call deposit on the lending pool contract with the value of this address.balance. So everything in our address, uh, everything in our smart contract that we want to deposit goes back in. So let's follow the logic back again. So now we're coming back up here and we're depositing um, the balance that we have just borrowed back into the contract. And now our name for the smart contract is, uh, you know, we, our allocation is the message.value, which is what we asked for. So all the funds are now back in the lending pool. So let's follow this back. So then this finishes here, this finishes here, and then this finishes back over here. So then it checks, okay, is the address of, is, is the balance of this address greater than or equal to the balance before? And because we deposited it straight back in, it's gonna be the exact same, and then it's going to pass. So then once that's done, uh, we come back to our contract. And so once the flash loan is done, we hit withdraw. So once withdraw is complete, we head over here to this function and it's going to work out the amount that we're gonna withdraw. It's gonna set that to zero. And then it's gonna send to the sender, which is the smart contract, the value that we have, uh, that we are entitled to, which is the entire loan balance. So this then comes back to this receive function, which is because it's just sending us value. It's not doing a function call. It's literally just saying send value. And it's gonna come here and within the function, we then want to transfer this all straight back out to um, the owner. So the owner was the person who deployed this contract. So any funds that come in here will go directly to the, uh, the owner. And that's how you do it. That's the entire thing. So how do we write this in code? Um, so this one is actually pretty straightforward. All we need to do is really deploy the function, and deploy the contract, the attacking contract, and then... Um, call the function. So we do this via attack factory. We call the attack factory function to deploy the side entrance contract. Uh, and we want to deploy it with the parameters of the pool address. We then just call the attack function and we want to borrow all the ether in the pool, which is this uh, constant that's defined up here of a thousand ETH. And that's it. So let's go ahead and run this. We're going to have run yarn run side entrance. And we can see that passes, no problem. Let's go ahead and get the green tick on the side. Side entrance, let's go. Very nice, cool, awesome. All right, that's how you do the side entrance challenge. Hope you guys learned something from that. I'll be back with the next challenge, number five, and I'll see you in the next one. Catch you later.